Hi, this is Radhav, your Edu Chalky. So today we will be dealing with chemical kinetics. In chemical kinetics, we deal with time calculations, rate and concentration of substances which cannot be dealt in thermodynamics. Let us look at few terminologies used in chemical kinetics. The first one is rate. Rate of reaction of a species in a chemical reaction is the rate at which concentration or amount of the species changes with time. Mathematically, rate is defined as rate equals to change in concentration divided by change in time. This is known as average rate. Now, if delta t tends to zero, that is we are taking an infinitely small time interval, then limit delta t tends to zero, delta c by delta d is equals to dc by dt. This is known as instantaneous rate. Confused? Don't be. Let us understand this with the help of speed time distance. Let's say you are going from home to school on your bike. Now read your speedometer. The speed that you are looking at while driving is your instantaneous speed. That is the speed with which you are currently going. Now do another thing. See the time at which you leave your home and again see the time at which you reach the school. And now also calculate the distance between your school and home with the help of odometer. Now divide this distance by the time you calculated. The thing that you're gonna get is the average speed. So it must be very clear that average rate is analogous to average speed and instantaneous rate is analogous to instantaneous speed. One more thing that we can define out here is the initial rate. It is the rate of reaction at the starting. It is dc by dt when t is 0. One more thing that you should be careful about is when in questions only rate word is used then assume instantaneous rate and not the average one. Let's understand the average rate and the instantaneous rate with the help of a graph. Let x axis represent the time and y axis represent the concentration of the reacting species. Suppose the graph looks like now this curve is some function c of t that is function of concentration with time. Let's take a time t1 and y axis we get c t1 corresponding to t1 now let this be the tangent to the curve at t1 the slope of this line would be representing the instantaneous rate let's consider another graph and two time intervals t1 and t2 the concentrations corresponding to these time intervals is c t2 and c t1. Let this be the secant up to the curve. Now the slope of this secant will be c t2 minus c t1 by t2 minus t1 which gives the average rate between the time interval t1 and t2. One more thing that is to be noted is rate is always written as a positive number in general. So the rate of reactant will be minus dr by dt where r represents concentration of reactant at any time. We have put this minus sign out here because dr is a negative number. This is because the concentration of the reactant will be decreasing. Say suppose initially 
you had 5 moles of reactant. Later on, you had 4.5 moles of reactant. Now if we calculate the change in number of moles of the reactant, then this would be 4.5 minus 5, which would give us minus 0.5 moles, which is a negative quantity. As we have said earlier, that rate is always represented as a positive number. So we add an additional minus sign so as to make it positive. Now the rate of reaction of product will be d p by dt where p represents the concentration of product at any time t. We know that the product will be increasing in concentration. So the dp term will be positive hence no need of negative sign. Now let's come to the unit of rate in aqueous medium. Aqueous medium means the reactants are soluble in water. That is the reaction medium is water. So in aqueous medium the unit of rate is concentration per unit time which will be mole per liter per second. Now if the reactants and the products are gases then unit of the rate will be expressed as partial pressure upon time which will be pascal upon second. Now when a reaction takes place something is consumed and something is formed. So there must be a definite relationship between the rate of reaction of the reactants and the products. Let's take the example of formation of ammonia with the help of nitrogen and hydrogen by Haber's process. Rate of reaction of nitrogen is minus D partial pressure of N2 by DT and rate of reaction of H2 gaseous is minus D by partial pressure of hydrogen by DT. Similarly, rate of reaction of ammonia gaseous is d by dt of partial pressure of ammonia. Now let's talk about the relationship between these three rates. The relationship will be expressed as minus d by dt of partial pressure of N2 is minus 1 by 3 d by dt of partial pressure of H2 which will be equals to 1 by 2 d by dt of partial pressure of ammonia. For any general reaction A times A plus B times B giving C times C plus D times D. The relationship between the rate of reactants and products will be minus 1 by A D by DT of A should be equals to minus 1 by B D by DT of B which will be equals to 1 by C D by DT of concentration of C which will be equals to 1 by D D by DT of concentration of D. One more important thing that we can note is Rate of a reaction has no meaning, but for a given balanced stoichiometry, a meaning is assigned with this. Rate of reaction is equals to minus 1 by A, dA by dt equals to minus 1 by B, dB by dt equals to 1 by C, dC dt and so on. The value of rate of reaction is stoichiometry dependent. But rate of reaction of A is not dependent on stoichiometry. Let's now talk about the factors affecting rate of reaction of any species. The factors are first one, concentration of different species. The second one is temperature. The third one is catalyst. Fourth is physical states. Fifth is dielectric constant of medium of reaction. The sixth one is pH of the medium. The next is radiations such as light, 8th is pressure and 9th is electric and magnetic fields. Now let's understand each of these terms. 
concentration of species. The rate of reaction generally increases with the concentration of reactants and generally decreases with the concentration of products. Temperature. It is found that the reactions which are exothermic, that is which release heat during the reaction, are generally decreased with the increase in temperature, while those which are endothermic, that is which absorb heat during the reaction, generally increase with the increase in temperature. Catalyst. There are two types of catalysts, one positive one and one negative. Positive catalyst increase the rate of reaction while the negative catalyst decrease the rate of reaction. In general, if it is not mentioned that the catalyst positive or negative, then assume it to be positive one. Physical state. It is found that the rate of reaction is generally higher in gaseous medium compared to the liquid and yet lower in solid. This is because in gaseous medium, the speed of particles is much higher as compared to liquid and it's yet lower in solids. In solids, the particles are just vibrating about the mean position. Now let's come to the dielectric constant of medium of reaction. In general, it is seen that more is the dielectric constant, more easily reaction takes place. pH of the medium. pH is nothing but a measure of concentration of H plus species in the medium. Mathematically, pH is equals to minus log of concentration of H plus species. Radiations. There are certain reactions such as the decomposition of AgBr or AgI which take place only in the presence of light. The decomposition of AgBr is also used in black and white photography. The next one is pressure. Pressure plays an important role when the reaction medium is gaseous. Increasing pressure increases the partial pressure of the gases and increasing their concentration. So depending upon the skyphometry, the rate of reaction increases or decreases. Electric and magnetic fields. These fields also affect the rate of reaction. For example, in an electrochemical cell, positive ion that are the cations move towards the cathode and negative ion that is the anions move towards the anode and hence the cations react at the cathode while the anions react at the anode.